Lord Minas, are you a disinterested enough figure to be running this review? Well, I think one wants objective analysis. I, it's the co-op group approached me about this. They think I've got a lot of relevant experience. I was chairman of Marks and Spencer. I've been on the boards of banks and insurance companies. One of the things the co-op has learned is that you can't have leadership which is wholly in the hands of people who don't have a good business background. But you were a city minister from 2008 to 2010 when uh, the takeover of Britannia was taking place and the then government egged that on. That wasn't a good plan, was it? As far as I'm aware, the government didn't egg it on. Kirsty, Paul, all Flowers my said, Paul Flowers said that Ed Balls distinctly uh, encouraged the move. Well, uh, that's for Ed Balls to explain. I think Ed Balls encouraged the passing by Parliament of a bill proposed by a Conservative backbencher, Mr John Butterfield. Uh, I don't think that Ed Balls was actually involved in this. It may well have been that Ed Balls thought it was rather clever to claim mm -hmm. some responsibility for being involved when it looked as though it was working. But I think the truth will show that he wasn't involved. I had no meetings specifically with but the would, but it Was your gut feeling this was a bad idea? I don't think it was for government to have that view. The regulators didn't bring any issues to me as the minister uh, in connection with the co-op or the Britannia. Now that we hear that um, Paul Flowers was actually interviewed by the FSA before becoming chairman, he had been a non-executive director, of course, they didn't do a very good job, did they? Well, I think there are limits to what the regulators can do. I think we need to have a, a, a closer gap of what we believe the regulators can do and what they can't do. The real responsibility here, Kirsty, for appointing Paul Flowers as chairman of the mm -hmm. Co-op Bank lies with the board of the Co-op Group. Mm -hmm. And you only had to spend about 10 minutes listening to Paul Flowers being interviewed by the Treasury Select Committee to see he was woefully short of the skills yeah. required to head a bank. So one of the things I'm going to have to ask in this governance review, which is going to be quite uncomfortable, is how did you come to the conclusion, collectively and individually, that Paul Flowers had the skills to run a large well, bank? Well, perhaps they just weren't the people of the right calibre. Well, asking the questions and, and they got away with it. Well, uh, I think as far as the, the board of the co-op is concerned, there's a, a, an issue of how we make the co-op a truly democratic institution. We have 8 million members. Just bear in mind that all the political parties only have 300,000 between them. But how do we give them effective voice in terms of leading the group? And I think the, the co-op's governance has fallen short of best practice and uh, we need to address that. But maybe, maybe the, ca the whole character of the bank undergoes a huge change anyway. When you've got hedge funds owning 30%, it's not the same bank. Maybe it's time just to say, actually, that's not a model we want anymore. No, I think that the bank with the co-op owning 30% and other investors owning 70%, very strongly capitalised now, Kirsty, one of the most strongly capitalised banks in the country, is a viable part of a mutual offering. But remember, the co-op is much more than the bank. It's yeah, but the bank became much more than everything else. Well, it, it, and, and, and people must be held to account. How did you allow a bank to lose but one and a half billion hand? pounds? Can you say you want them all to go and start again? I can say that if that's the right conclusion. Uh, I need to do my work. I'm not going to preempt that. Um, but uh, I'm not a softy um, and I will not pull my punches. And if I feel that people have let the co op movement down, then I will say so. Lord Myers, thank you very much.